I get thrown out, I'll go live with my mom. Mama, get out the mother! Welcome <laughs> to the Real Estate and Chill Podcast, the newest and coolest podcast. So tune in. Two experts discussing the real estate market. Loan Officer James Chudley like. and Associate Real Estate Broker Kevin Iglesias. Beware, this is not another boring podcast. This right here is the shit you need to hear, respectfully. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back to the newest episode of the Real Estate and Chill Podcast. I'm your host, James Chattery from United Mortgage here with Kevin Iglesias, Associate Broker. Today in the building, we have our first international guest all the way from Canada. He probably knows Drake, all right? <laughs> He's Ken Purdy from Surhan. And exit in Canada, correct? Right, that's right. Also known as a door knocker. You've probably seen him banging on your door, asking if you want to sell your home or list your home. We have the one and only Ken Purdy in the building, guys. Thank you very much. Yeah, pleasure to have you. Thank you for coming. It's an honor. Thanks so much. Yeah. Want to just give a small introduction of uh, who you are? Well, um, I am a real estate agent that started in this gig about 13 years ago. Veteran. Yeah, a veteran. Um, though uh, I always, I always love to uh, shout from the rooftops all my failures and the insecurities. So, first eight years were like a train wreck, if you will, just trying to stay above float. And then uh, fast forward 2018, had a huge existential crisis, if you will, and uh, had some really great things come into my life. And uh, the last four years have been uh, amazing. And, uh, yeah, and then fast forward to here I am today, having the opportunity to, you know, be a real estate agent in, uh, in Nova Scotia and also, have, you know, be blessed to be able to door knock for, for Mr. Ryan Surhan here in New York uh, a few times a year. So that's, 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 awesome. that's the sticky 60 second uh, in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's crazy that you just got in from Canada today like, like hours ago <laughs> <laughs> all the way here yeah like, again we're very honored yeah, it's, a, it's an here. hour behind so i'm a little jet lagged so <laughs> <laughs> we'll get through it though <laughs> so when you first got started were yes. you 100 percent full-time or did you have a part-time job yeah so i got uh, involved in the business in 2009 right during the recession and it lagged in can a little bit so before residential resale i was selling new home construction so on top of that i was the worst financial decision maker in the world so we had some pretty bad finances that i had to take care of and where i was because new construction was taking a big hit and i had to make some money and i was you know literally unemployable so i thought uh, real estate getting my license would be the natural transition Going through the process, I realized it was like apples and oranges, that uh, it's totally different animal. And I realized I had to go actually and find the business. And um, yeah, then one thing led to another that thankfully, before I even started the business, uh, I was introduced to door knocking uh, by a friend of mine, uh, the next province over. He, uh, he introduced it in such a way that uh, made it come across non-salesy and non-snake oily like when you when you picture you know a, a traditional person knocking on your door with the plaid you know suit with the <laughs> briefcase opening up and the slicked hair so he introduced to me this guy amazing guy bill nasby he uh god rest his soul he passed away a few years ago but he was like old when i met him he was the best door knocker in the world so he took me under his wing and uh taught me everything he knew and uh just ran with it now, it's funny because a lot of people in, in the times we are now, right, they say social media is everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I built my business foundation on the old school techniques, they call it, right? Yeah. Door knocking and cold calling. That's actually how I met him. Yeah. Like, literally from a cold call. Didn't even know who he was. And I said, uh, you know, it, 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 how did that separate you apart from everybody else? Because knocking on doors is not easy. Well, what separated me from the other 1,200 agents in the city was that the other 1199 didn't door knock. (laughs) So when you think about it, it's such an easy skill set, if you can learn it, to separate yourself. I I always use the example of uh, asking a girl to dance in your junior high, right? So you've got the girl across the, you know, the gym there, and we're going to use social media as an example and not to crap on social media. A lot of people do very, very well social media. Though, this is how I would picture it. 
you know, you have these guys on the other side of the gym. They spend all night making these poster boards. Hey, dance with me, dance with me. They got all these different colors. Everybody has their, you know, it's, <laughs> and it's basically the loudest dog and the most creative dog, you know, wins, if you will, in that in that venue. And then you have this one nerdy guy who just leaves that group and just kind of walks across the dance floor and goes up to the girl and asks her to dance. Like, no fanfare, nothing over the top, just a simple question. She could say no, though you've saved all that time by just simply asking the question. Great analogy. But you always have a rebuttal for that no, right? Because door knocking, most of the time, you run into a lot of rebuttals. Right? Yeah, it's mostly rebuttals. So what was really great about how Bill Nasby approached it um, was he had these five beautiful questions that just totally, totally summed it up. Um, and to burn them off, it's, you know, when do you plan on moving? How long have you lived here? Where did you move from? If you could move anywhere else, where would you move to? And when would that be? So, and just to take it, you know, to the next to the next level, when, when I'm door knocking, my number one priority is to have a good conversation. So you're talking about rebuttals and, you know, and people also talk about rejection. Though, when I door knock, and I've, I've talked to over 13,000 people at the doors, um, so that's actual conversations, not including those that aren't home. Wow. And if, and people say, how many times have you been rejected? And I'll say, I've never been rejected at the doors because my number one goal when I'm out door knocking is only to have a quality conversation with somebody. So if I'm having that quality, and it's literally 40 seconds long, like I am from the moment I say, hello, Ken with real estate, when do you plan on moving? And that's how I start it. Like it's right out of the gates. To the moment I leave the door, it's 40 seconds later. So what I'm doing there is I'm being very effective. I'm also being um, very mindful and respectful of that person's time in their side of the door. And also what's really cool about it is because you're only there for 40 seconds, there's only a limited number of objections you're going to get. And any objection that you get, you know, you guys being in sales, you can just answer quickly and it doesn't matter what they throw at you. You can answer quickly and get right back to the questions. So it's very smooth, very slick. And, and then once you get to hone it, then, like you, like you guys said, cold calling, like that is so beyond my comfort zone because you have to depend on your voice. When I'm door knocking, I get to use my whole physicality to, you know, to really be expressive from that perspective. So when I'm leaving somebody's door, I want them to have a better experience than when I first knocked on it. So when I have that mindset, you get to hone your craft, you're relaxed, and you're, and you're chill, if you will. And it's literally like walking up and knocking on the door of a friend's house. So you, your first question is right off the bat. There's hey, no, yeah. hey, when are you moving? Hey, Ken with real estate, when do you plan on moving? With the biggest cat-eating grin you can possibly <laughs> have. <laughs> do you ever get people like, I'm not moving, get the f*** out of here. <laughs> Never. No. Really? I mean, well, Canada's once, different. It's not yeah. New York. <laughs> well, I've been knocking in New York. That's the funny thing. Oh, you're knocking in the city. That's right. Yeah, I've been knocking in New York since that's like November. Two, that's like just right two from different perspective. Worlds. Two different worlds. Not so much. Really? Not so much because there's basically your four personality styles. If, if you ever follow the DISC system, do you ever familiar with the DISC system? With personality? So you have D, which is an extroverted, yeah. task-oriented. I is an extroverted, people-oriented. S is an introverted, people-oriented. And a C is an introverted, task oriented. I'm actually an introvert. Like, I am an introvert type of person. So, there's not a Canadian personality and a New York personality. There's the disc personality. There are a lot more, you know, get to the point personalities in New York, though it still fits within that, in that structure. So, I can just immediately adjust my personality to their personality because that's the key. Like if, if I'm weak and they're strong, they're going to have my lunch. But I can be weak but authoritative with a weak person. And it's just a matter of mirroring their personality. So when, you know, I knock on the door of somebody from New York and they're slammed up the door and they say, what do you want? Hey, Ken with real estate, when do you plan on moving? Like I'm kind of in their face and they'll respect that because I'm meeting them without them even knowing it. I'm meeting them where they're at. 
Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Like on the phones, I, I do a lot of cold calling and have a lot of success with it. Yeah. And one thing is you always want to match that person's energy, yeah. right? So if they're monotone, you don't want to be excited and all over the place. You want to match that person's uh, Absolutely. voice tone and be at the same level that they are. Yeah. And that's why mm-hmm. when, I'm, when I'm physically knocking, you know, when they throw open the door, I know immediately who I have to become. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they'll peek through the door. So then I have to shrink myself up. I use the same script. It's just, hey, Ken, with real estate, when you plan on moving, it's just in a softer tone. And when it's delivered right, I would say 99 times out of 100, the, the first response is laughter. And when somebody yeah, laughs, I mean, it completely disarms them. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. That, and it's funny. There's a lot of similarities, even though you said you're not, uh, like, cold calling is totally different. One yeah. thing I do is I always try to make them feel comfortable. I always, I'll, I'll crack a joke or something like yeah. that. And uh, it, it changes the complete mood. You can hear it from the voice. It's just like they have their guard up here. And then once you make them laugh, it's like. Absolutely. Yeah. It's completely different. Yeah. It's night and day. Yeah. Because I find, I think that's where we miss a lot in relation to working with people is, you know, we have our own natural personality. But if we don't learn how to grow outside of that, like if I was going to go to Guatemala I'm going to want to learn Spanish if I want to learn to talk to, to people who live in Guatemala. It doesn't make me inauthentic. It doesn't make me I'm not being true to myself. It just means I want to learn your language if I want to have a conversation with you, and I can still be totally who I am. So I can be that introvert, and because I honor you at the doors, I will become that extrovert for that 40 seconds because that way we're going to have the best conversation, and then you can go back to have supper or what have you. So, quick question. So, when you say the 40 seconds, right? So, yeah. um, maybe I'm just looking at this wrong way. But, so, what if, like, some, we have, like, a really good... You're not limiting yourself to 40 seconds, right? Or you if are. If I can get out of there in 30 seconds, I'll get out of there in 30 seconds. What if you have, like, a very, very good... Com- like, you just want to limit, like... Yeah. Okay. So, going back to my only goal when I'm out door knocking is to have that effective conversation. So, let's say... One out of a hundred, somebody, somebody is a lead. What I do is I say, hey, well, I'm just out here looking to see who's making a move. I can, you know, I'm looking for somebody who's moving within a year. And if they're moving within a year, I'll grab their name and phone number if it's, you know, if it's appropriate. And then I say, I'll be back. I'm off the door. Because again, my purpose is only to have that effective conversation because, as you guys know, the business is one in the follow-up. Right. Right. So if I'm only focusing on, you know, I'm not walking across that dance floor to ask that girl to marry me. I'm only asking her to dance. So if I'm focusing, I'm only having a quality conversation. Not only do I not get rejected in, in those 99 conversations, getting a lead, I literally think of it as just a bonus. Okay, great. I got a lead. Oh, do you have time to come in? Well, I got to finish my doors, but let's set up a time because again, I want to honor their time because I don't know what I interrupted them to. So let's say I spent 15 minutes with them and then I'm on my way. As soon as I leave the door, they could go, oh my gosh, now my whole night's ruined and I didn't even know it. So you got to be careful of falling into a trap of giving into, you know, that, um, I don't know what you would call it, but giving, you know, going down that road thinking that, oh, this is a really great thing when it might not be a great thing, I think people will respect you more if you say, you know what, I got to finish my doors. So let me come back. Like, even, even if it's later tonight. Um, not that I've not gone in, though keeping in mind to honoring their time because I'm interrupting whatever they're doing. So I want to make sure I leave it in the best frame of mind when I'm leaving. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does. And I think that like on top of that, just like my thought process through it is that if you're asking them, right, you have 40-second conversation, Energy is hot, wherever the energy is at, but yep. the like, um, just like the concern and just everything, like it's at a very high level. Like the 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 attention that they have towards you and just like yeah. how much their like res- their responsiveness is very high. So being at that high level, then when you leave and then you make an appointment to come back, right? They're now, I guess I could say chasing, like not really chasing, but something similar. They're going after you to come back because they're interested and they want you to come back. Yeah. So. I would always say the the litmus test of a great conversation is you leave before they want you to. Yeah, you leave when the when the conversation. Yeah. Is high. yeah, that's that's even with people who aren't moving. 
Like I've been in situations where people who they're not moving, but I'm shutting down the conversation. Sometimes they're just kind of standing there at the door as I'm walking away. Well, like it's just because, and again, it's not because, and this is what's really cool about door knocking, especially the way I do it, because, you know, I don't have any natural sales skills. I don't have that yet. I don't have the street smarts. Like everything I've learned, I've learned through sheer will and it's taken me this long to get to the point where I've really honed it. So if I'm able to get to this place where I'm able to, you know, you know the questions in the script so that you couldn't forget them even if you tried, and then you bring the physicality into it, leaving them at the door wanting more, you know, even if they're not moving, I could get a call through my down the road. Hey, we weren't moving then, but we are moving now. You knocked on the door, you're hired. Like that, that's right. happened. And I've gotten in only because I've knocked on their door because nobody else has. That's interesting. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's interesting hearing that perspective because I've been door knocking as well. Yeah. Um, and I've had people like, oh, yeah, come in, come in. Like, I've knocked on this guy's door. Yeah. He invited me in. He said, if you could uh, convince my wife, that's fine. You know, but right. do your job. Yeah, yeah. He wanted to sell. Yeah. I came in. We spoke. She showed me the house. They signed then and there. Right. So there's instances like... Absolutely. Yeah. And again, I would never, ever try to even pretend that one way works better than another. Um, we all, I've heard this term, you know, we all build bricks differently. Yeah. So um, it's just the way I was taught. And, and and this guy who taught me, again, he when he taught me, he was like, he was in his 80s really? when, he, when he first taught me. He was an ex-military guy and... And you didn't mess with that script. You didn't add any words. And even when um, he would take you door knocking, like the first question is, when do you plan on moving? And if you say wondering, I'm wondering when you're planning on moving, he'll correct you right there at the doorstop, right in front of the person at the door. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we're not wondering. <laughs> <laughs> Try it again. And they're like, what's going on? <laughs> Give me five push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, so yeah, so... Every way works. I totally believe that. You just have to do it. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's funny is, and we hear this, I mean, all the time here, where you said there's not a lot of people that door knock um, in Canada. Same thing here. We don't we don't hear a lot of people door knocking. Either they're too fearful of the rejections or what am I going to say if they mm -hmm. say this? They don't know what to say rebuttal-wise. Yeah. Um, how You think it took you, what, about eight years to perfect that, you said? or took me about eight years. It was, it was almost like Groundhog Day. So basically wasted the first eight years of my real estate life. But you wake up the one morning and you realize, oh, there is life. But this learned skill remained. So, so I was like, oh, my gosh, I've learned this skill. Now I can actually start a real estate career with this thing. So um, I totally missed what you said. It took you eight years to perfect the craft? It took me, well, it took me eight years to... I guess it took me eight years to come to realize that I wasn't just a real estate agent, that I could be a real estate professional. So, and then through the next three years after that, I basically went through this metamorphosis and um, Sirhan, I went actually through, through Sirhan branding. They totally revolutionized my branding from a generic kind of a branding system to, you know, creating the door knocker, if you will, and basically focusing everything I do Every, every place where you look now has to do with door knocking. Whereas before, before just two years ago, this is non-existent. So I was kind of a mess from that perspective. So it's really helped me from the perspective of taking that from being a real estate agent to being a real estate professional to now going into this brand is, is like a whole new set of tricks that I've, it's like a whirlwind. I mean, like, you know, get invited here. Like, it's like, what the heck's going on here? Like, this, this isn't what I, you know, knocks. yeah, exactly. And that's, and that's, that's the crazy thing. Like I got, I was talking to uh, someone the other day, um, helping the buy, they, they reached out to me. And as we were answer, answering, hanging up the phone, she says, Oh, I'm sorry. What, what's your name? By the way, all I know you is, is the door knocker. That's well, cool. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. Like huh. I that's when you know, the brand is strong. And very strong, and it was the first time that I was really able to own my business and take ownership of it and really lose myself in it. Like if you go on my, you know, on my Instagram page, which is my main 
place of where I do things, you're not going to see listings. You're not going to see sales. You're not going to see any evidence of that whatsoever because that's what everybody else is doing. So I'm thinking, well, how can I stand out? Well, if nobody door knocks, what if I just only do things that have to do with door knocking? Nothing else whatsoever. So it's been about a year and it's starting to get a little bit of traction. We'll see where it goes. I mean, it's more for people that I knock on their doors to direct them to kind of like a resume, if you will, to see, you know, what I do and stuff like that. So just letting it grow organically is take, you know, takes a lot of pressure off me because I'm not trying to build a social media business, if you will, though there does seem to be tricklings of, you know, byproducts of that from that standpoint. It's funny that you say that, um, we go to places sometimes and we like we we have a strong community who supports us. And they're like, Oh, you're you know, Jimmy from Real Estate and Chill. His real name is James, but a lot of people I call him Jimmy all the time. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of people are like, Where's Jimmy? Every time they see me. Yeah. I'm like, Oh, James. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they'll reach out to us. So, you know, it, it's pretty cool once yeah. you build a brand so strong. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Recognized for Absolutely. Me. So I'm new into it. So we'll see I mean, you know, we'll see what uh, see what comes of it for sure. What led you to door knock all the way to New York City? Yeah, I'm very <laughs> Ryan right Sirhan's door. Because that's <laughs> so, the million dollar question everybody that's wants to know. So that was part of the existential crisis, if you will, back in 2018. So 2018 was probably the darkest year of my life, personally, just every, in every aspect of it. Uh, though it was also the same year that the ship was turning, which was a blessing as well. So walking through all of this, I came across um, this interview uh, that was back October 2018 with uh, Grant Cardone. He was interviewing this guy named Ryan Serhant. Didn't know him really from a whole while. I knew he was on some show, but I never watched the show at all. So I wasn't familiar. With, I mean, I would have, I recognized him, but didn't know anything about him. So he does his interview and he interviewed really well. And he was promoting his book, Sell It Like Serhant. So I thought, oh, sounds like a book I, I should pick up. So I, I listened to my books on audio. So I was going away the next province over. So I picked it up and drove two hour and a half up, two and a half hours back. And during that time, I listened to his book. And I don't, I don't know what it was, but I was literally driving when I finished the book. It's like, audio hopes you enjoyed this program. <laughs> I could not drive another, I was going to say kilometer, but this is the States, another mile down the road. I had to literally pull off the highway to send him what was going to be the first of hundreds of emails. Wow. And it was basically, I actually read the email uh, the other day. It's basically, hey, uh, just finished your book. Like, this is amazing. Um, this is where I am at currently. You know, just not in a good place. But there's something about this book that's really affecting me. And some way, somehow, someday, I'm going to come work for you door knocking. And, of course, he didn't respond. <laughs> <laughs> so I sent another email, and then I sent another. And hundreds later, and almost three years later, you know, with a few things in between, like events in between, like one time I, I was about a year into it. If I'm trying to get my dates right, it doesn't really matter. Is around Easter time. I'm like, well, wait a second. You know, I'm trying to door knock for this guy. A, he doesn't know I exist. B, can I even do this? Like, New York's a different breed. So I went, well, there's one way to find out. So I'm like, I'm going to book a flight. I'm going to fly down there and just do it. Completely uninvited. Just see what happens. So I booked a flight, flew to Brooklyn, and stayed in Brooklyn for three days and door knocked in Park Slope just to see if I could do it. And... I could. <laughs> oh. So that was really cool, though he didn't acknowledge it whatsoever, which is <laughs> which was fine. Um, so I came home and I was like, okay, now what am I going to do? And then he would have these little contests. So he had this contest by my course, and I'll do a 30 second video promoting you as an agent or advertising one of your properties. And I went, or we can use this as a resume. So I bought the course and in every line of the form that you filled out, 
I just filled out why I wanted to work for him. Wow. So he sent me my personalized 30-second PFO email. <laughs> Thanks, but you gotta, he, I, he didn't really understand what I was trying to do. Right. No one really understands what I'm actually still doing. <laughs> so he basically said, yeah, uh, you know, it's I'm not looking for anybody, and, and, but, you know, thanks for knocking on all those doors. Thumbs up. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> like, oh, that, was, that was nice. So fast forward, I'm like, oh, I got to get, gotta get in front of this guy somehow. So then in 2020, he did this uh, bucket list challenge. It was a 2020 bucket list challenge. Basically, it was a, it was a contest. These 20 items complete these 20 items so i print off the list and i'm like oh these are all outside of anything i would ever want to do like networking like being an introvert networking is definitely not something i want to do just just stuff where you got to be around people and again being a natural introvert i'd rather focus out on the doors but then i read at the top after i read that i i cannot do most of these items so i was about to throw it out but then it said the top three winners each month get a free 10 minute facetime with ryan and I'm like, oh, now I got to do it. Well, not only am I going to do it, I got to win. I got to win the first month and be number one. So in the first month, I completed 17 of the 20 items. Like just crushed it. Like I had to get his attention. And we had our 10 minute FaceTime. And I said, I want to door knock for you. And he said, you want to move to New York and door knock for me? I said, no, no, I want to stay in Nova Scotia and I'll fly down, knock for a few days, give you the leads, and then I'll fly home. And then he asked what every other human being would ask, why on earth would you <laughs> ever want to do that? And the short answer was his book completely wrecked me. And at that point, it was, it was a year and a half in, and I had seen a steady growth in myself in that year and a half so it was sustained growth if you will i said your book wrecked me like i have to do this and i love new york city so it's a perfect match and i've always kind of you know wanted to work in new york if you will like but where is there an opportunity so here we go so uh left the call he was didn't hate the idea kind of like the idea because it was kind of outside the box and, you know, I'd have a guy from Nova Scotia to fly down here and knock doors in New York. Like, no one's ever done that. So that part would be up his alley. And get off the phone. He said he'd get back to me and no, no response, which was totally fine. So I just continued my weekly emails. And then this wonderful thing called COVID knocked on our door. And that held everything off. So he basically sent me an email a few months later saying everything's on pause until, you know, COVID. So I was like, okay, that's that's fair. But I kept up with the weekly emails. And then I was probably October, I was like, okay, this is this is this is enough, enough. Like this is like two years in. Like I I gotta I gotta go all in. So I signed up to the pro membership. Because the pro membership comes with the one hour face to face with Ryan. <laughs> and when they signed me up, I said, okay, I just want you to know, like he obviously, like when his staff signed me up, I said, I just want you to know, I'm only doing this to get in front of Ryan. Like everything else is great, that's fine, but I'm only doing this to get in front of Ryan. But it was, the funny thing was, is they took me through the branding strategy session before even meeting him. And that's, that's what destroyed my world even more. So without even meeting Ryan, I actually, like, I actually got value, but, like, where my mind was, I was like, oh, my gosh, this is incredible. <laughs> so fast forward, and a few delays later, we, you know, they tried to do a Zoom call with him. I went, nope, it's going to be in person. And then after a few delays because of COVID, I finally got my meeting with him uh, in July of last year. And we chatted for a bit and stuff like that, and then 20 minutes in, um, I basically so I, said, I said, do you know why I'm here? Like, do you know why I'm sitting across from you right now? And he goes, and he had a little smirk. He goes, tell me why. I said, I want to door knock for you. And he goes, okay, you can door knock for me. <laughs> 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 and then here we are. That's it? That, I mean, 
Yeah, I mean, now there's there's some <laughs> logistical stuff uh, involved because, um, I mean, depending how much time we have, I mean, there's a whole can of worms as far as if there's a question of, wait a second, you're Canadian. How do you make money in the States? And, like, how does that all work? So if we have time, yeah. to, okay. So my wife wasn't all that keen about me pursuing this because I have I have narcissistic tendencies about myself, okay? I love sharing all my weaknesses, by the way. And put a narcissistic person in New York City who's not used to being in New York City. I mean, like, it's, it's a recipe for disaster, right? Like, just, you know, the big shot in New York, you're making money down there. So when it was becoming, that was a, like this was actually more than just delusion that it might actually happen. She said, okay, if you're going to do this, you can't make one red cent. I went, okay, I'm not doing this for the money anyway. She's like, oh, that, that, that didn't fly too well. So what, what, this is where the cool part is. So I'm actually connected with the largest Sunday school in the world in Brooklyn, in Bushwick. And it's actually where I stay. I stay at their hostel, I st- at their headquarters uh, in Bushwick, which is really, really, really cool. And so my whole intention was to just donate any money I get, just pass it on to them. But through talking with the lawyers and stuff like that, I would you still need a work visa to receive any money. So when I was talking to my lawyers, he goes, and I told him that it was pretty much volunteer work. He goes, oh, that's easy. Just remove you from the equation altogether. So I literally just volunteer, and then anything that happens, money gets transferred right from Sirhant to the Sunday school in Brooklyn, and I don't see one dime. Plus, I get to, you know, door knock and work for Ryan, and, you know, I can, you know, there's fringe benefits, of course, because I get, you know, I have a business card that says Ken.Purdy at Sirhant.com. There's only, like couple hundred people in the world have that kind of an email. So there's a lot of benefits outside of that to it. But uh, being able to get connected that way, that's what made it really, really cool. Yeah. You weren't expecting that. No, I was, I was not <laughs> expecting I'm mind that. Blown. I was I'm not. I'm completely mind blown right now. <laughs> so your initial goal and just being resilient, persistent, and just never giving up hope is what put yeah. you in that position. And I've which, never gone after anything like that before in my life. Like I was, even with my wife, I met her and was married within nine months. Wow. Like 25 years ago this year. So this is probably the, the most I've ever gone after something without response. Like yeah. this is like, he never responded. Like, like I was in the dark. Like I was like, I, he's not even seeing this, but like it just got to the point that I just, yeah. And then here I am. Like, it's like, what? Like this. follow up works. I guess. Oh yeah. Like you never yeah. stopped. I never, st- I did stop for about a month after I came home from Brooklyn. I was pretty dejected. I thought, I thought that was going to get it. And then for about a couple of weeks or three weeks, I was like, oh, I'm done. But then I thought, you know what? I'm in this fire. Let's just go till, till the end. The wheels fall off. Yeah. <laughs> till the wheels fall off. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I helped, you know, I was helping business back home. Cause I was, you know, it was, I was just being better, better as an agent, like just a more quality of an agent. Like it just affected me that much. So Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's interesting. Like yeah. I, was, I was not expecting yeah. that. Oh, yeah. When you I said that at the end, I was like, well, <laughs> I was so in tune, and then in my head was like, what just happened right now? Yeah. But um, that's that's very interesting. Yeah. That's yeah. Interesting. Absolutely. But, um, Absolutely. What's the Canada market like? Is, is it like it is over here? If it's on fire seller's market, then it is. Um, got that in common. The weird thing with us, though, we've always, we were always like, the forgotten best kept secret if you will like it was you know we're on the east coast okay but if anybody were ever to reference canada in the past would be from coast to coast from vancouver to montreal and just atlantic canada didn't didn't even exist in the eyes of most people so you know we would get like you know average price of a home is like two hundred thousand dollars and you know would go up like four or five percent per year, like just boring growth and boring corrections and stuff like that. Meanwhile, your larger markets are experiencing skyrockets and you know, up high ups and low lows. And then through COVID, 
actually before COVID, we started seeing a sense of a seller's market. Um, though in the last three years, you know, the average price of a house, you know, it's relative, though it's it's doubled from the perspective of, you know, the average price of a house is $250,000. Now it's $500,000 and they're all selling within a week. And, you know, there's a lot of homes like in the six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars $800,000 range. And it's just like, what is going on? And the city's growing like crazy. Um, and there's just literally no sign of it really slowing down. Like there's little you know, lulls here and there just as people trying to get their balances, what's going on in the market though, you know, as a seller's agent, um, and that's where I've had most of my focus is being a seller's agent. It's, it's almost like my ships come in, like all those doors, like years and years and years later, like the, it's really makes door knocking a lot easier from that perspective, because I mean, there's a lot of people that want to move, but they just don't know what to do. Right. And cause the information's out there, but it's the interpretation of the information that, you know, that, you know, separates agents from the average person. So, um, yeah, it's been a huge blessing from that perspective. That's an interesting topic, though, because, all right, so a lot of sellers here are going either to Florida, <coughs> North Carolina, South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Or, or Connecticut. Mm-hmm. Connecticut, like, they're moving out of state. <laughs> so, yeah, good question. Um, so you'll get, so for example... I knocked on this door last year, and it, it stands out. And um, when you plan on moving, oh, I'm not moving. I just moved in a few months ago. Oh, where did you move from? Oh, I moved from BC. What? Why did you move here? He says, I sold my house for $1.5 million. So in his case, so we're, we're seeing a lot of people moving from the larger markets to Halifax because... COVID's created, you know, the opportunity for people to work from home in positions that weren't necessarily designed to work from home, though they've now created those positions to effectively work from home. And a lot of people are saying, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I've got a life here now, like working from home, I'm effective, I'm getting my job done. I'm not coming back to the office. And if you don't like it, I'll just go to another company that's willing to take me. So I can sell my massive home. I can move to the East Coast, which is a beautiful province. I mean, like, it's just a beautiful province. So there's a lot going for it from that perspective. And I can even overpay a house by $100,000 because I'm still going to bank a million bucks. Yeah. And... It's everything is everything's jolly. So uh, there is that certain segment drive in the market for sure. Uh, I've been to Canada a couple of times. I have family, and I think oh, it's been a while. I think we're in Canada, Canada, Quebec. Okay, so on the East Coast, but no. But, uh, <laughs> they, their first language is French. Mm-hmm. Oui, oui. Oh, you speak, you speak French? Well? No. <laughs> 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 no. I mean, I I used to speak. I went to French immersion as a kid, but I I mean, I would have to you know really think about it. Um, in order to speak, no, where our province is, is, is mostly English. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, when I went to McDonald's, it was the first time I ever heard of poutine. Right? Oh, like, that's it. Poutine. What's that? Poutine. It's French fries, gravy, and curd cheese. And it's, Interesting. oh, it's I'll amazing. It. Yeah. It. Yeah. But on the East coast, uh, better than poutine, we have what's called donairs. What's that? That would be the, uh, some, are you familiar with gyros? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's something like a gyro, but much better. Really? Yeah. It's meat on a spit, and it's just it's got this sauce with like a vinegar, sugar, milk type of combination, and it's just yeah, it's it's birthed in Atlantic Canada, and it's 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 definitely one of those things you gotta experience for sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna try it out. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. You're really yeah. transparent on sharing your weaknesses. Oh, weaknesses. I love it. A lot of people don't do that. Oh. What? motivating you to do that that's a really good question because most so i'm 50 years old yeah (laughs) so i'm 50 years old and i lived most of my life with walls no one got in and i couldn't get out and i you know again narcissism pride and just think of all the character defects you can think of i probably had a phd in them and I have a strong faith. So that led me to basically get to a place where I was able to be open. So almost like a kid with a new toy. Um, I got to a place because I lived most of my life 
in a, in a prison, if you will, for all intents and purposes, to get to a place where I'm able to literally shout my, you know, my insecurities, you know, my doubts, my fears, my, you know, from the rooftops, like, and I don't want to wait till um, this is how I used to be, because most people can't relate. If you're going through something, it's hard to relate to somebody who's already been through it. Because it's, it's easy to tell the story once we've gotten to their side of it because like, okay, we're in the clear. Now I can share. Like, I'm only starting this book in my life. So from that perspective, you know, I've, I'm still working through my insecurities. I'm still, you know, still working through, you know, there's days where I go, okay, I got I to gotta do this job. Okay, I'm going to get out of bed now. Okay, now I'm going to get a shower. Like, I have to break them down to micro steps in order to get to that next thing and guess what sometimes i go back to bed like sometimes it you know it just doesn't come together so i wouldn't call it depression if you will um though you know just through years of having those insecurities and stuff like that it uh, it loves to rear its head in in certain situations so i've had to learn how to conquer it you know, come up with, you know, things to conquer it when I'm strong so that when I'm weak, I can go, okay, when I did this last time, this worked. Okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And, you know, I like to say, you know, most people have this many failures and this many successes. I have this many failures and this many successes, which is fine because it's all relative. And if I didn't try to push myself and have those failures, then, you know, I wouldn't be where I am today and, you know, and each corner I'm turning, it's like, okay, this is cool. This is cool. This is cool. So, yeah. So the, the, the worse, the better in my mind, because especially when you look at, you know, real estate and real estate agents, you know, new agents are coming into the business and, and I love sitting down with new agents or agents that are thinking about getting their license. I, I take them out for what I call a talk, try to talk you out of the business coffee because it's usually, oh, you should be an agent because you got a great personality personality has nothing to do with being successful in real estate it's persistence and hard work i know people with great personalities that are lazy so that doesn't work <laughs> um or it's oh i want to get real estate i want to get in real estate i like looking at houses really what do you like being thrown on the bus and being betrayed and you know because this business is not for the faint of heart so and what a thick d- skin yeah you have to, and most people don't have that thick skin so what we do what do we do we cover it you know, we come to this business. It's not what we thought it's going to be. So, you know, we lose ourselves in addiction. You know, we'll, we'll buy nice cars. We'll buy nice clothes. We'll do whatever we can to cover this, you know, icky structure, if, if you will, with this veneer. And meanwhile, we're self-destructing. But because nobody's talking about it, everybody's playing the game. And that's why I resisted like a banshee to go on social media. Like I'm not a fan of social media generally just because of of that false plastic world that it's created so you know when i decided to take that leap to go into social media i was very uh um aware that you know okay i'm not going to do anything personal like i don't want to put a picture of me and my wife there because i don't want somebody thinking oh look at that couple they must be so nice you know, I, I don't want people to do that. In fact, I do have one picture on my Facebook page. It's a picture of me and my wife walking um, uh, a couple years ago. And I almost put it up there. It's kind of like a stick it because literally two hours before that picture was taken, we were knocking on divorce's door. But if you look at that picture, it's the most beautiful picture. But the tension that was inside of both of us at the time was through the roof. So, yeah, just, yeah, like to be aware that there are most people, and especially in this business, you know, we, we, we feel like we have to have it all together. And in a lot of cases, we don't have it all together. So it's, it's important to have that camaraderie and that openness and stuff like that. So it's almost like a little mini crusade that I'm on to try to, you know, share that, you know, weaknesses, you know, we don't have to be ashamed of our weaknesses. Like, you know, it, it is what it is. We have them. Let's talk about it. Let's walk through it and get, you know, and, and get through it. I think that like social media, like as you were saying before, I think it's 
like, good way to put it. It's just like a highlight reel. Like, everyone just sees social media thinks like, oh, everything about this person's life is great. Perception is like, reality. I know. Nowadays. Yeah, and, we yeah. need to, and it's going to get it's going to get worse if yeah. you will with, like with the metaverse, metaverse and everything, and everything yeah. virtual reality and stuff like that so not that i have anything against it i'm just being very careful on the role that i play in it man yeah. well ken you've been very transparent very yeah. open and open book. we're <laughs> honored to have lot. you as a first yeah, yeah international yeah. Uh, this guest is, this here. is really awesome to be here next oh, time i want to i want to shoot those guns next time <laughs> 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 we gotta find those money. we lost those we got oh did you really oh okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the inflation gun. i hear you <laughs> but um <laughs> anything else that you can give to an agent who's looking to door knock and to uh you know have that success that you've been having yeah i would say specifically with door knocking because we think of door knocking as go from zero to door knocking and it doesn't have to be like that you know you might want a door knock though there might be some apprehension to do it there are micro steps you can take to get your way there like you don't have to go from zero to door knock like there are so many pre steps you can take so reach out to me you know you know where can me. people reach out to you best way would be i'm really trying to you know focus on putting everything on instagram so it's the door i mean it's the dot door dot knocker but if you type the door knocker in instagram my, my name will pop up so you know reach out to me and i love to you know share what i got all right yeah awesome it's an honor having you here yeah this yeah. is really awesome yeah. it was a pleasure thank you yeah, so absolutely. much that was the latest episode of real estate and chill podcast we will see you next time